Assalamu alaikum. In the previous presentation, we've been through the single pedicle advancement flap. This presentation is on another variant of the advancement flaps, the bipedicle flap and its applications in head and neck surgery. Advancement flaps are local flaps taken from tissues around a defect that cannot be closed primarily, so you are recruiting tissues from its side to fill it up. If these tissues are moved directly in a linear way to fill up the defect, they are termed advancement flaps. They can be either random or axial flaps. If it is random, its blood supply is coming now only through its base, um, through the uh, perforators of the musculocutaneous arteries. And of course, that is now reduced because you have uh, incised the uh, sides and the leading edge of the flap so the length to the breadth of the flap should remain uh, within a ratio of one to one in most areas of the body or two to one in the face and the head and the neck where you have better vascularity if the flap is axial and has cutaneous arteries going through the flap itself this ratio can extend from four to one length to breadth or even more because you have these named uh, cutaneous arteries going through the substance of the flap itself. The movement of the flap after planning and incising around it to fill up the defect should be in a linear movement without twisting or lateral movements. Barrows triangles at the sides of the flap are um, important in the design because the discrepancy in the length of the flap and the wound edge, there would be excess tissue uh, towards the base of the uh, uh, flap, and these excess tissues forming the deformity of a dog ear deformity would need to be excised to flatten the area. Uh, so Barrow's triangles are designed to do this, in its simplest form, it's an equilateral triangle at both ends of both sides of the flap. The uh, side of this equilateral triangle is half the side of the uh, defect, uh, but it takes other forms and can be in other areas along the path of the flap. And you can even have other uh, alternatives like a Z-plasty, but we'll come to this later. Bipedical flaps are used rather than a single pedicle flap if the defect is large enough to require more tissues than what a single pedicle can provide. The other indication would be if the defect is in the midline, we're keeping the symmetry and of the landmarks around this um, uh, midline is important, so you recruit tissues from the two sides to keep the symmetry. The basic form of the bipedical flap is when the two flaps are directly opposing each other. And when these flaps are mobilized and suture, the final outcome would resemble an edge and sometimes called an edge plasty. They come in other forms as well. They can come like an intact bridge of tissues, uh, not divided in the middle, just an intact bridge of tissues with pedicles on both sides of the defect, or they can come like uh, an, a triangular defect. You would use uh, bipedicle flaps from both sides, and this would transform an A-shaped de defect into a T-shaped closure, or an O-shaped defect into a T-shaped closure. There are also other variants that we are going through in this presentation. So we'll start with the basic form of these flaps, the etchplasty, in which the incisions are placed parallel to relaxed skin tension lines, either in the forehead or the lips or the eyelids. And you recruit tissues from the two sides of the defect. And uh, once these uh, two pedicles are sutured, they produce an etch-shaped outcome. That's why it's called an edge plasty. This is to illustrate the planning and the technique of the edge plasty of the bilateral 
advancement flaps. If you have a, a rectangular or a square defect in the midline, in the forehead or the lips, and the lesion is excised, and you have all the parallel lines parallel to the uh, relaxed skin tension lines on both sides, and you've marked the Barrows triangles toward the base of the flap on the two sides, and these are excised to ease the mobilization of the flaps from lateral to medial to meet up in the defect. Um, and once they reach the midline, they can uh, meet their, the other flap and the midline, keeping the symmetry and it's not too difficult to close up the uh, Barrows triangles after this. And this is the final outcome resembling an edge. One other variant of the bipedical flap is the trippier flap from the upper eyelid. If you have a defect in the lower eyelid that cannot be closed primarily or by recruiting of local tissues in here, you can bring about a bridge of intact bridge of skin from the upper eyelid or you have some more redundant skin and this bridge of skin would be uh, bipedicled or supplied from both sides from vessels around the medial and the lateral canthus of the eye and just transposed uh, to the lower eyelid and sutured in place the lines of the incision and the closure would be parallel to the relaxed skin tension line. So you have an intact um, bridge of skin transformed from upper eyelid to fill up a gap in the lower eyelid. This is another variant of the bipedical flap, the O to T or the A to T advancement flaps. If there is a circular or a triangular defect, in close relationship to an important linear landmark like eyebrows, eyelids, lips, or the hairline, and you don't want to disturb this linear landmark too much, the um, defect, uh, whether it is circular or triangular, can be excised, and then tissues from both sides of the defect can be mobilized to meet up in the midline without too much disturbing of the linear uh, landmark here, so you end up having a, a T-shaped closure rather than an A-shaped defect. So if you have here a linear landmark, say an eyebrow or an eyelid, and you don't want this to be disturbed too much, uh, the lesion is circular or triangular. So Barrow's triangles are removed from both ends of the linear landmark. And then the triangular lesion here is excised and this triangular defect is closed by mobilizing of the two flaps to meet in the midline and the Barrow's triangles would have helped uh, to mobilize these flaps with no uh, excess redundancies at the two ends of the linear landmark these two Barrow's triangles. Bipedical flaps are not necessarily a rectangular shape with parallel uh, sides. They can sometimes take the shape of a crescent, uh, particularly around the midline. In this example, if there is a lesion in the lower third of the nasal bridge and the midline, um, after excising this lesion, it can be closed with crescentic flaps from both sides of the midline that would meet uh, exactly in the midline, just 
superior to the nasal uh, tip. So the lesion is first removed and then both flaps are undermined. And these lines are all parallel to the relaxed skin tension lines on the nasal bridge. And once the flaps are created and undermined, they can be mobilized to meet in the midline. And these bilateral crescentic advancement flaps are not necessarily always equal and symmetrical and meet in the midline. Sometimes if you have a lesion that lies in the paramedian position rather than strictly in the midline, you can design uh, crescentic flaps that are unequal or unsymmetrical. One side will be larger than the other because they are no longer meeting in the midline exactly. Uh, and the end results can be fairly acceptable after uh, the suturing of the two flaps in the paramedian position. This will illustrate how you can have asymmetric crescentic advancement flaps rather than strictly equal and symmetrical flaps. The lesion is uh, in the paramedian position and when it is excised you should also excise a small piece of skin and the perialar area so that the final closure would lie strictly in this sulcus. Now once the lesion and the extra piece of skin around the ala are excised you are left with a defect that is paramedian rather than exactly median, but you can still create flaps from the two sides that are going to meet in the paramedian position and they are going to keep all the important landmarks of the lip and the ala in position with no much tension or displacement. One final example for the application of the bipedical advancement flaps is the helix. Um, when there is a lesion involving the helix that is too big to be closed by advancing a single pedicle, uh, you would consider using pedicles from both sides of the lesion. Um, but that would entail an incision uh, just in the uh, helical sulcus to free the helix to move uh, upwards in this direction and downwards in the other direction to meet in uh, the middle. Uh, that would entail minimum deformity and distortion of the uh, auricle by uh, mobilizing uh, tissues from both sides of the defect. We've been through some applications of the bipedical advancement flaps in the forehead, the lips, the eyelids, the tip of the nose, and the helix of the auricle. Salam alaikum.